They go, it's filming again. <laughs> well, it's Do you want to swap places? Because then you're not going to have my arm in every single video. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> Don't slip. <laughs> He's got his one eye on the other. He's got one eye on a penguin yeah. and one eye on where he's yeah. going. There's one right under your bucket. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I want to make sure he counts his fingers when he comes yeah. back out. <laughs> yeah. Right, hello everyone again. Um, now this is the King Penguin Park. Now as you can see, these are the King Penguins. And they do like to get, uh, they do like to eat time. They do get a little bit aggressive with one another and us. Um, so if you see any of them sort of really going for each other, really don't worry, we do monitor that. Um, so it does look like it hurts them quite a lot, but they're actually quite robust um, creatures. They're quite solid, they look quite fragile, but really they are very, uh, very solid birds. <laughs> now, um, king penguins, they're actually, um, of, well, these guys in particular, are very um, often mistaken for emperor penguins. Emperor penguins are actually the largest penguin species. And they actually look very much like king penguins. They have the same uh, white belly, the same black back, and the yellow deep hair as well. The only difference is that as the penguins are actually four and a half feet tall. So they're not actually that much shorter, uh, stronger than I am, because I'm only five foot. So I really would want to meet one of them on the draft alley at night. Um, but these guys, they're the second tallest, and they're about two and a half feet. Um, well, that's the tallest they've ever found one. Um, so there is a slight difference, but in general, they do look very similar. Now, you'll find these ones in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, they do like the little hot box, do get their way sometimes. Oh, 
walk around and then adjustable. Um, I'll start off with Fingal here, which is this one with the nice with the white tag on. Now Fingal, he's actually the most chilled out one we got from Edinburgh. The um, the Edinburgh Zoo penguins were the reason this cage is now in this enclosure. Um, it was to protect ourselves and our legs because they're a little bit aggressive. Um, <laughs> but uh, so he's so he's a very chilled out penguin. It's not really bothered by anybody or anything. And we've got McLean right next to him with the red and yellow. Um, and unfortunately, unlike Bingle, he was absolutely horrible when he first arrived. Um, he was he just liked to run at you basically. Never seen a big penguin run, but he did, and he would run at you and pet you and bite you until you left him alone. So unfortunately, it did take us a good couple of months for him to actually start to like us. So he's actually calmed down a little bit now. Um, we've got Colin and Gavin. Now I just saw them a second ago. Colin is uh, that was Colin. That was Gavin there with the yellow tag off, and he's actually uh, Gavin's uh, father, who is the one with the blue tag, which has now run away. Oh, the one, Colin's the right one at the back there with the blue tag on, and he's their father and son, and they do get on very well, shall we say? And um, they have been known to call to each other during the breeding season, so they do get on. They have a very nice close relationship. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, they're not very successful their breeding, considering they're, they're attracted to one another. Um, but that, yeah, that's Colin and Gavin. And again, well, Gavin's okay, but Colin in particular, he can be quite aggressive as well. So we do try to stay away from him. He was the one who threw my hand up there when we did Humboldt Court. And lastly, but not least, we've got Niles, which is that one there with the orange tag on. And Niles is basically Embrace uh, Surprise Story. He's, um, he's a very popular penguin. He was actually used as a mascot for the Norwegian Army. And over the years, he's actually gone up to the ranks. And a couple of years ago, the King of Norway actually went over to Edinburgh Zoo and he actually knighted him. Um, he has a parade and everything. He's got his little medallion. Um, unfortunately, we don't have it with us, but it fits nicely on his uh, wing there. And actually, so now he's, his official title is the Neil Bogloff. Um, but it's a bit of a mouthful, so we just call it Niall. Um, but he, like I said, he is quite the star of the show. So he's, a, he's quite a well-trained penguin. Um, he's a bit grumpy at the moment because um, as of about two weeks ago, he came off an imaginary egg. He's been sat on an egg, well, thin air, for about three weeks thinking it was an egg. Um, so he's, he's slowly coming out of his grumpiness from that. But usually he's quite a lovely penguin. Now, I'll introduce you to ours now. We've got, we've got Frank there, which is a, one that everybody asks about, because they always want to know why he's brown. And basically, the reason he's brown is he hasn't gone through a month. Now, penguins go through that every year, where they basically lose their feathers and grow back nice new ones. Now, usually they do that just in time for breeding season. So basically, they have a nice new shiny coat to attract all of the females, or all of the males. Um, and, but unfortunately, for about three and a half years, or three years almost, he hasn't done that. So that's why he's brown, because all of the feathers on his coat are basically just quite old and tacky. It's basically like us if we never washed the hair or got it cut or anything, it would end up looking a bit straggly after a while. Um, but he's doing a brilliant example of it at the moment. We've got his son here, Junior. Um, oh, he will. Um, he's, he's a little bit slow. They don't feed very much during um, uh, molting. Um, as you can see, he sort of just turns away. Um, basically, uh, he's actually going through his molt at the moment, like I said. They do it usually just before breeding time, which is about March time. And as you can see, he's a little bit late. Um, but he was like his dad, Frank, over there. He actually hasn't molted in the last three years. So as you can just see, the remains of his feathers are also quite brown. So it's quite nice that he's finally molting. So hopefully soon, he'll end up looking like a proper...